Before I start, I'd just like to say another big thank you to everybody who sent me emails. I am absolutely swamped um, and I can't always get back to you and I do appreciate you getting in touch. But I have to say that very often um, I'm at a loss also what how to answer because some people uh, have got themselves into some very difficult predicaments and I'm no expert on all the legal and lawful stuff. I obviously interview a number of people and also I can't always pass on or forward the emails to the various guests that I've got because they may not all the time want to be influxed or swamped by emails as well. They're offering their information obviously to help people get a perspective on these things but um, they're not uh, sitting in an office like I am uh, answering emails every day so but thank you so much and also big thanks to everybody who's donated it really helps particularly now as uh, I have demonetized from this channel but I'm doing my best to keep it going. So that said talking about money and things I know that there's this a lot of people are wanting to get back to the land and there's a lot of bits of parcels of land. I was talking to somebody only yesterday who said, well, there's a lot of land available because farms are, are, are packing up. People are packing up. They can't make it pay. And so they're selling off their land, whether that's in little plots or parcels or whether the whole farm or they're looking at these people who want to shove in solar panels or wind farms and all of that, which is abhorrent to me, as you can imagine. And because of that, you know, various bits of land are on there. And, and this chap was saying to me, he said, of course, you know, the problem is, would you get planning permission to be able to build on these bits of land? And I thought to myself, that's an interesting conundrum, seeing as we want to get back to the land, we want to be able to grow our own food, we want to be very much independent, uh, out of the system, as so many people are, because the system is rotten. Uh, and full of rancid operators who are trying to uh, extract money from us by staying in that jurisdiction. And I thought to myself, I wonder if it's possible, and I had a couple of things. Firstly, the planning, the planning stuff, the planning departments from the various councils, of course, as we understand about the all caps name, the legal fiction, the birth certificate name that isn't you, that uh, you are the executor and sole beneficiary of, that the uh, the courts or the government are, or the state are merely the trustees and you, you need to swap the positions and let them know your standing in this matter. But uh, they, the planning people are only after, are they not, because they are a corporation, the corporate name, the legal fiction name, the, the legal identity name, the all caps name that we, we know about. And therefore, it did strike me that should you buy a piece of land and you decide, I, I'm going to put a piece of, a house up on there, a little house or uh, somewhere to live. And the, the planning people come along and say, excuse me, you can't do that. There's uh, certain rules and regulations. You say, well, hold on a minute. Who are you after? Who are you talking to? Well, I'm talking to you. And, and then they'd give you the all caps name. And I thought to myself, well, you could produce the birth certificate and say, ah, but this is the all caps name. I'm a living man, of course, but uh, this is the all caps name. He, it, this, it, this legal fiction is not actually living here. Thank you very much. He's not living here. I will uh, put him in an envelope and he can be, he can put, he put into a bank vault. He could be put into one of these storage facilities that you can get. He could be stored at a friend's house. But whatever you say, this particular individual, or rather this legal fiction, is not actually living here. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Now, that might not be enough for them because they still want to extract money or to control you or to say, well, you can't possibly build this. And one of the problems would be, naturally, that the land, the land itself would be most likely purchased in the legal fiction's name in that capitalization and of course it would be on land registry that it is purchased in that way which is what most people of us do buy uh, when we buy stuff it's all put on the land registry we're buying the title we register and all of that so i was thinking ah okay then in order to get out of their jurisdiction i wonder if there's another way of doing this 
would it be possible? And I'm throwing this out there to anybody who's got half a brain and can think about it or knows somebody. I I'm wondering, OK, so maybe then the legal fiction, if we go through the normal process of buying um, property like a, a field somewhere or a bit of land, what you would obviously normally do is you'd go to the, the owner of the land through a solicitor, would you not? And there would be the whole legal business of buying the land and the solicitor would use the all caps name. He would add on, the, I think it's the AP1 form, who is the local authority and then put whichever county council that is. Uh, that's no good to us at all because he is obviously in the system and purchasing the land through the system's mechanisms. But that doesn't mean to say that you have to buy a piece of land through a solicitor. Surely you should be able to do all the paperwork yourself. However, if the money, of course, comes out of a bank, it may be in a bank transfer because the money is all in the uppercase legal name. That's no good at all. So I'm wondering maybe that what you need to do then is to purchase your land. You take the money, if you've got the money in the bank, you take the money and you buy gold or silver, but gold would be more convenient. So let's say you've got a piece of land and it's, I don't know what it is, let's say it's £50,000 for a field or £100,000, it doesn't really matter, however much land you want. You've found the ideal prime place and you think, yeah, this will be good, there's a bit of an entrance here, I can come in, it's out the way, I can be respectable, I can be honourable, I won't upset the neighbours and all those sort of things. And you think, this is a lovely bit of land, so what will I do? So what if you then, if you've got your 50 grand, let's say it's that, and you remove the money and you buy gold, you just buy 50 grand's worth of gold. Now, 50 grand's worth of gold is only going to be a few coins in actual gold, so it's easy to transport because it's only like very small amount, really, um, from what I can see. I don't know what it is. There, you know, it'll be a little lump or in bullion, whatever it is, that you buy it from a reputable place. And then you go to the uh, to the person who's selling the land and you say, excuse me, I'd like to buy the land, but I don't want to deal with the banks. I will give you the gold. Now, surely it would be possible for you and he or she to come up with a contract in which even if you're using land registry to uh, register the title or to fill in the various forms or to do it through them and to say, I am buying this as a living man. And so you might be Richard from the family of Vobes, let's say, or you might be Richard, uh, brackets, Vobes, whichever way. So in other words, you're not using the surname and you're not certainly using the all caps name. Now it must be possible to be able to do this and say that I am going to purchase this in a common law way, in a natural law way, in a, in a way that is not in the legalese business, but I'm going to buy it in gold, which then is a private transaction. The banks are no longer involved because you've got the money out of the bank and you can go to your, the person who's selling the land and say, this is a trade. I will buy this bit of land from you in exchange for £50,000 worth of gold. Now, of course, the owner has got to be in agreement with this, but it may be possible that you can persuade the owner of the land who's going to part with the land that this makes a lot of sense because it's advantageous to him because he will have something if he doesn't need the cash immediately. The value is going to go up much quicker than the fiat currency in the bank. And if he wants to change the gold into fiat currency, he can probably do that relatively easily and put the money into the bank uh, or into whatever else he wants to invest it. He may want to then use that gold himself to go and buy another piece of land or something else, whatever he wants to do. Maybe he wants to buy a caravan or who knows, a car or whatever. And he has got that ability to do that. But it's an exchange that's in the private and that seems to me is where we got to get to. Now, I don't know how possible that is, but it seems that actually it should be possible to be able to take a piece of land and somebody who wants to have that land to exchange money for that land. Now, the question may arise is what is 
the person with the gold actually buying? Is he buying the title to the land? And is the owner of that land entitled to sell him the actual land? That may be the conundrum that we come across. But what we definitely need to do for the future is to fathom out how we can get land into the private so that it is being sold without the banks, without this nonsense about registering the title on its own and not actually owning it. That we end up, all of us, with our property for our safety's sake as a lordial titles, meaning that we've got that we own the land and the title to the land and nobody else can come in like in the great taking and remove any of it because we need to be in honour, we need to have things that we actually have paid for and that nobody else has anything to do with. And so if anybody's got any great ideas on that, um, then do let me know. But it should be possible, surely, to take some gold and have a transaction in the private with somebody else rather than involving the government who later on may say, ah, but planning, planning will apply to you. No, there's no planning applied. I mean, let's face it, you go back in time, no planning was required to shove up houses and do little uh, bits and pieces to uh, somebody who owns their own land. It is a load of old nonsense. Let's move the government out of our jurisdiction. Let's move the government out, their greedy little fingers, out of our world and be back in the private and independent again. Love to hear your thoughts. And if anyone's done this, please get in touch.